Hi, I'm Megan. Today I just want to give you kind of a brief introduction to emergency triage and how that works. Every hospital, doesn't matter if you're emergency practice or if you're general practice, specialty, a lot of you are going to be seeing emergencies of some sort. And so being able to triage those emergencies is a really important skill for all technicians to have. Even if you're not receiving emergencies, triage is something that you're going to do with each patient every time you approach them. Uh, there are a lot of patients that have multiple problems going on, and so you need to be able to triage those problems within one patient and decide which is the worst, what do you need to do first. The most important part of any triage is understanding what's normal and being very comfortable with what's normal in a patient so that you can determine what's abnormal. So we're just going to run through briefly what our normal vital signs are. We're going to start with heart rate. So in dogs, 80 to about 140. In cats, 180 to 220. And I'm talking about patients in the hospital. If you go home and you pet your cat and his heart rate's 130 while he's purring on your lap, totally acceptable. That cat that's in the hospital, that's sick, that's scared, that there's a dog next to it, I expect that cat to be able to mount some sort of anxiety response, so I want to see that heart rate a little bit higher. In dogs, I don't like to see them too much below 80 unless they're under the influence of drugs, but a dog that's in the lobby that's there because he doesn't feel well, I expect that heart rate to be a little bit higher. In cats, much more concerned with a low heart rate. In dogs, much more concerned with a high heart rate. So understanding what that means. Um, shock and hypovolemia and stress and pain, those are all gonna increase heart rate in dogs. Cats that are in shock, as cats start to do very poorly, their heart rate drops. So knowing which is more dangerous to see in those species as they come in. Uh, I like to feel pulses all the time in patients, and they should be strong. They shouldn't come up and snap against your fingers. They shouldn't just dribble beneath your fingers. So feeling femoral pulses, feeling dorsal metatarsal pulses, especially in dogs, uh, can give you a good idea of how well things are going. Cats, a little bit more challenging, but you can feel femoral pulses in cats, and I encourage everybody to do that each time you put your hands on a patient so that you can judge treatment time to treatment time how well that animal is doing. Looking at respiratory rate, about 12 to 40 is going to be okay, but even sometimes more than rate, making sure that we're paying really close attention to their effort. We can have some animals that have a, a respiratory rate of 24, but they're really working to breathe or they're using their abdominal muscles to push air out. So making sure that we're looking at the whole patient, not just counting a number, writing it down, and moving on. Mucous membranes, obviously those should be pink. Anything outside of the pink, uh, blue or gray or bright red or white, all of that is bad news. Looking at capillary refill time, one to two seconds is what we want to see. Anything really short, anything really long, those are outside of our normal ranges and we definitely need to be concerned about that. Temperature is not a, a vital sign that I perform on a lobby triage, for example, but on hospitalized patients finding out, you know, 100.5 do about 102, 102.5, that's what we're happy with. Anything outside of that range, start looking for reasons why. Why would this patient have a fever? Has this catheter been in for seven days and it's looking really bloody around the tape? Um, that renal failure cat who has a temperature of 98.5, are we not providing enough heat support for it? Make sure that you're thinking about what could cause that. Blood pressure, again, not something that we're going to do on triage in the lobby, but knowing what your normal values are, about 90 to 150 systolic, 80 to 110 mean arterial pressure, anything outside of those ranges, somebody needs to be aware of that. Hey, doc, I have a dog here with a systolic blood pressure of 70. What do you want to do about that? So getting really comfortable with what your normal vital signs are, then you're ready to jump out and look at these patients who are doing poorly and make decisions on what to do next. Now triage in a lot of situations starts on the phone. Owners are going to call, they're going to have questions. What, you know, what should I do? Do I need to come in on an emergency basis? Can I wait for an exam? What's happening? So I like to get just a little bit of medical history. Now, I don't want them to tell me when they got the puppy nine years ago, everything that's happened, but I am gonna ask these clients over the phone, are they on any medications? Is this a cat that has heart disease? That really changes the conversation that I'm going to have. Is this a dog uh, who is a known Addisonian and now he's having problems? So just briefly get a quick medical history, find out what type of you know, big disease processes you may be dealing with. Ask them how the animal is breathing. Respiratory distress is my number one scary emergency. Those guys always need to be seen. So even if a client calls and says, my dog's been vomiting for a couple days, what should I do? 
Is he on any medications? Nope. How's he breathing? Well, actually, he's breathing kind of really fast or he's breathing really deeply. Okay, then I don't need to ask any more questions. That dog should come in to be seen. I'm also going to ask about attitude. That dog who's been vomiting and still running around and feeling great and wants to eat and wants to play, I'm less concerned about that dog than the dog who's been vomiting and refuses to get up off the bed and won't wag his tail. So both of those animals need to be seen, one of them on an emergency basis. The other one may be able to wait a couple hours until you have time to fit him into your schedule. Is he still eating and drinking? Does he still have an appetite? Is he vomiting right after he eats, vomiting right after he drinks? Those are all good questions to have. And then the vomiting and diarrhea. Is there blood? Is it getting worse? How long has it been going on? These are the general questions that I will ask over the phone that can then kind of help guide us down a path to what else needs to be done about this animal. Even if the client calls because they think that their dog has an ear infection, and you ask, is he eating and drinking? Well, no, he hasn't really wanted to eat for a couple days. That tells me that dog's probably significantly painful. That ear infection may be worse than we think it is. Um, so asking these questions for any type of complaint uh, is going to really help you determine whether or not that animal needs to come in. When the animal does come into the lobby, I really recommend, if you're, even if you're a general practice and you're used to seeing a lot of wellness exams, any animal that comes in for a sick type exam should really be looked at by a technician as soon as they arrive to the hospital. First step you want to do is just introduce yourself as a technician. I think a lot of technicians are a little bit shy. If you, you know, not used to dealing with a lot of strangers in a general practice, hopefully you know the client a little bit, but it's really important to make eye contact with the owner introduce yourself. I'm a technician. I just want to take a look at your animal and make sure that they're okay to wait with you until the doctor can see you. So make sure to do that. Establish that you're somebody with some medical knowledge and that you're there to perform a quick evaluation on their pet. Quick basic vitals. Um, again, I don't even listen to their chest with my stethoscope. In the lobby, there's a lot going on. The dog's really excited. I'm going to look at their gums. I'm going to feel for some pulses. I'm going to watch them breathe. I'm going to get a good idea of what their heart rate is, and then I'm done. A triage is not a full list of vitals. It's really just making a quick assessment of that animal. Find out again what their presenting complaint is. Is here because he's vomiting? Is here because his skin is really itchy? Is here because he's limping? Whatever that is, just figure out that quick presenting complaint, and then make sure that that animal is stable to wait. If you're concerned about maybe his temperature is really high or eh, it looks kind of weird, maybe his blood pressure is not as high as I'd like it to be, just tell the clients, hey, I want to check a couple of things. If he's normal, I'll bring him right back up to you and he can wait until the doctor's ready to see him. There are a couple situations that are classified as a stat triage, meaning those patients really need to get to the treatment area as soon as possible. Again, first one on my list is respiratory distress. If they come in, the animal's having problems breathing, my first question is going to be, is it okay if I bring your animal back to the treatment area and start providing some oxygen for them? Almost always, clients are very happy to have you do that. Just make sure that you tell them what your plan is <laughs> and why you really want to separate that owner from the animal. The next thing is animals that are collapsed or non-responsive. That cat who may be blocked, who's just lying in, the, in his kennel and not very responsive, that animal needs to get to the treatment area immediately. Um, dogs that have to be carried in because they're too weak to walk, those are the kind of patients that are stat and we need to get started with them right away. Lastly is uncontrollable bleeding. So bleeding through bandages, um, arteries that are spurting blood, large areas of skin missing, those patients really need to get straight to the back and get started to work on them. Lastly, there's a lot of client care that's involved, especially with any sort of emergency, and it's, it's important to set expectations for the client about what's going on. That starts when you introduce yourself and you tell them that you are a technician and that you are going to, to do a quick medical assessment on their animal. But especially if you separate the pet from the owner, make sure that the owner understands what's happening. Is it okay if we let your animal rest in some oxygen until the doctor can talk to you? I'm concerned that we might need to start some IV fluids on your cat. Is that okay? The doctor will come talk to you as soon as possible. Um, I just want to observe your dog in case he has any more seizures. Make sure the client understands what's happening, their expectations. Even if they're waiting with their pet in the lobby, don't tell them, oh, it'll just be a couple minutes and the doctor will be right with you. Tell them, you know, we'll see you as soon as we can. If you have any other questions, you know, ask the front desk for me. I'll come up and look at your pet again. Make sure that they understand what the next step is is and that it's not going to be just a couple minutes. 
frequent updates. Every time you walk back up to the lobby, don't be afraid, don't hide from that client, make eye contact. Hey, how are things going? I'm really sorry you're having to wait. We're almost there. You know, we haven't forgotten about you. People are much happier to wait if they know that you haven't forgotten about them. If you ignore them, they're going to assume that you've forgotten that they're there and they're just going to get more and more angry the longer that they sit. Follow up with them, you know, just continue to check in with them, make sure that they're comfortable with how their pet is doing and, you know, you're, that you're willing to go up and take a look at them, you know, if anything changes with that animal. So a lot of conversations, understanding what your normal values are and being ready to receive these emergencies, but any hospital can and should be performing triage on all of their patients. One veterinary website with everything you need. Check it out on atdove.org.